now. And I'm just gonna let her um, prend la parole. She's just gonna go ahead and start her webinar. Thank you so much for being here, all of you. And thank you, Vanessa, for uh, coming and be with us today. Hi, everybody. Um, well, I'm really glad to be here. I'm really happy that you joined us in this webinar. I want to thank Yalitza for having me here in her wonderful community. Um, I admire her a lot. Um, well, the thing is like, I, I really feel glad that uh, for being part of this Mambo Fit community. And I want, to, I want to start to present myself because like that you can know who is talking to you. And I want to share also uh, some slides because it's what is really important that you see from me. So my name is Vanessa Duarte. Um, I'm a food chemist and a food passionate. I love food, I love cooking, I love reading about nutrition, science, and for the, all that, I become a food chemist. What is a food chemist? Well, basically, it's a person who knows a little bit about nutrition, who knows a little bit about the composition of the food, how food is processed before going to the supermarket, how you can know also how to develop a new product, and also uh, it's possible to do research where you make relations between pathologies and food. In my case, I have worked in research and development for many years. I work right now for a kombucha company uh, in the development of new products and about the knowledge of kombucha. I don't want to make this uh, webinar complicated. I don't want like uh, use many uh, scientific terms, but I want to give you the more accurate information as possible. So what I want to give you today is to give you eight options of food that you can use in your diet that help you to fight virus. And how that works? Well, it's one of the things that I want to explain here. Um, the other thing that I want to explain to you is my motivation to do this webinar. So let's start for that. One of the things is that I would like to de demystify chemistry. Why? Because I consider, or from my perspective, is that chemistry is our chemistry or chemicals is a word that usually we see in a negative sense, or in a negative way. When we think about chemistry, I'm pretty sure that other uh, people think that it's complicated, that I don't know, maybe remember the teacher, uh, the chemistry teacher that was a bitch, or uh, maybe, I don't know, uh, the global warming, the food that have chemicals and can kill us. Um, what I want to tell you is that it's not always in that way. One of the things that is important for me to tell you is that as everything has a good side and a bad side, it depends on how people use it. So just to give you an example, I worked long time ago in clinical chemistry. What is clinical chemistry? Basically, it's the analysis of body fluids, like a urine, blood, even tissue. And the idea is to know the chemical composition of this fluid and correlate the composition with pathologies. It means with disease. In my case, I worked with cancer. And one of the things that we were correlating is the, um, the fact that people that was taking some antioxidants maybe were less uh, probable that they have cancer. So the thing is like uh, what I want to tell you with this is that what we were doing was something good. We were trying to find a solution for a disease that was cancer. Well, in my case, in my research, uh, we couldn't find a precise cause. It was very difficult. Cancer is a disease that is very, very complicated. So what we realized is that just one kind of food is not enough. We need many, many, many things to make 
our immune system system is stronger. We need different kinds of, of compounds, different kinds of food in order to boost our immune system. And it's one of the reasons why we are here today. The second reason is more a personal reason or a personal motivation, let's say, and it's my father. Why my father? Well, the thing is like my father has suffered of a stomach ulcer and a stroke, dengue, that is uh, a virus as well, and chikungunya, that is another virus that affected South America like six years ago. Many countries of South America were affected by this virus, and my father was affected. And how my father had the other three diseases before, when the chikungunya virus arrived to his body, it attacks all the weak part that he had because of the other disease. So what happened with the chikungunya is as is the COVID right now was a virus that nobody knew, nobody knew how to treat it, nobody knew what was the cause, uh, what were at the beginning nobody knew how uh, exactly the symptoms were. So for example in the case of my father when he got chikungunya, he started to feel muscle pain and joint swelling. And what the first doctor told him was take ibuprofen. Wrong. That was the worst advice that he could have. Because later they realized that the virus started to make you feel worse when you take ibuprofen and how my father had a lot of like a every every day so after a while he started to develop arthritis and with that pain for every day of your life my father was a really really energetic person he was really active he used to go jogging um, from one moment to another, from one day to another, his life changed completely. It was super, super difficult for him to just walk. Walk from here to the door that is three minutes, took him like a three minutes because the pain was so, 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 made his life very difficult. And that at the end made you depressed a little bit and but it's difficult for him and for everybody who is around him. Besides all that, the other thing that he had was food allergies. The virus made him develop allergies to food that he never or he never was allergic before. Actually my father never was allergic to any any food. So I start to read more deeply about food after that because I was so impressed how he used to eat chicken every day and now chicken caused him anaphylactic shock. So I started to look for doctors uh, that were specialized in immune system. Well, and I learned a lot about that. So one of the things is that when a virus attack your immune system and your immune system doesn't know the virus, what happens is that everything that go inside your system at that moment, your immune system detected as an enemy. Let's say that you are eating chicken and in that moment, the virus arrives to your body. What happens is that your immune system says, everybody is the enemy. So he detects the chicken, the virus and anything that is going in that moment inside of your body as an enemy. So when you try to eat chicken again, your immune system starts to make alarms. So it's when an allergy starts to have effects in your body. So all that made me read a lot because I wanted to find a solution for my father. In my case, uh, for me, it wasn't possible that from one day to another, he wasn't the same person. 
Unfortunately, I haven't found a solution yet. I always read a scientific uh, journals about chikungunya and I haven't found a solution. But what I found was many, many ways to do a prevention. Many, many ways to strong our immune system. And it's, that is the thing that I want to share with you today because I don't want that anybody have to leave that. Uh, and I think that if we work in prevention, we have less probability to be affected by a virus or another kind of disease that is related with the immune system. Okay, so now I, I would like to, to know, let me, I'm kind of new with this, so I'm going to look for the chat because I don't see the chat, sorry about that. Because I would like that you tell me in the, um, in the chat, I still don't see the chat, sorry. And now I see it. Okay, one of the things that is that you tell me, if I ask you to think in a food that boosts your immune system, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Curcuma, orange. What is called a fetz? Cool. So, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy that you have a great variety of options because usually people think just about orange. But you know, you have a lot of options. I love that. So, cool. Let's continue. So one of the things that people always say when they think about a flu or a cold is take vitamin C. Don't panic, people. She'll be back. She's, I'm sure she just needs to restart. She'll be back. Let's give her a couple of minutes. Bien, vale. Okay. I don't know, apparently my internet had an issue. Okay, let me share the presentation again. Okay, I think that I was in the vitamin C part. So, the thing is like, uh, uh, what I wanted to tell you is that orange is not the only source of vitamin C. I think that many people 
think that is the only one. Maybe you're not, but I just wanted to tell you that there are many, many vitamin C that orange. For example, kiwi is one of them. So if you want to boost your immune system with vitamin C, you have options as kiwi, uh, watermelon, papaya, guava, or guayab. Again, don't worry, she'll be back. <laughs> but just to, okay, let me stop. Let me mute. Okay, there we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is like a, not sharing my video and just the presentation like that. I think that we are going to have a better connection. I'm so sorry. So we were here. Um, well, Jelita was biking me up <laughs> with all the information. Um, well, see, as she was saying, uh, we have fruits besides the, the orange, like a kiwi, watermelon, papaya, and citrus fruits in general that have vitamin C. Also, we have vegetables as sweet peppers, broccoli, spinach, kale, Brussels sprouts, all those kind of food give us vitamin C besides other minerals that are good also for our body. But what I want to tell you here is that even if the vitamin C is a good immune system booster, it's not enough. The vitamin C is not enough, it's good, but we need something else. It's for that that it's important that we eat a good variety of food. So maybe you are wondering, well, how is this that is not enough? If everybody, people says that uh, vitamin C is good, and it is actually, but the immune system is a really complicated system. And actually is, the immune system is like a many, many, many systems uh, connected that need to work well like that, they can protect our body. Let's think that our immune system is like a, the armed forces of our body, is our army that is there to protect us. So here, uh, thinking of that, I did an analogy for you uh, on how the immune system work and how and why vitamin C is not enough. Well, the thing is like a, the immune system, as I said before, is our arm force. And, and if we compare that with the Canadian arm force, it means that to form our immune system or to boost our immune system, we need a Navy, we need an army, we need an air force, we need the reserve. And each part of this, each, the Navy, the army and the air force need a staff. It means a group of people that work for them. So now let's think that the Navy is the vitamin C. So let's think that we take vitamin C every day. So it means that our Navy is there, is prepared to fight. So what happens is that if the virus arrive by the coast, let's say that the virus arrive by the Atlantic coast and our vitamin C is there, it's going to fight back the virus. But what happens if the virus arrive by plane or arrive by land? We are not going to have anybody to protect us. 
we need something else. We need an army. We need an air force. And we don't have it because we were just worried about the vitamin C. So it's for that that it's important a variety of food because we need to make our own army, our own air force, taking vitamin D, taking some minerals, taking many, many, many compounds that are in the food. Everything is okay until here? Did you understand the analogy? Or did you need that I repeat something? Yeah, totally true, Margarita. It's like the Avengers. <laughs> we need a group of people there to protect us. Okay, cool. So, saying that, I just want to explain you how a virus work details but i just want to give you an idea maybe other maybe you know already but i i want to give you this information well the virus is something really little there that is just looking for a place to hold on for example these green parts they are they are looking for a place where to attach and our cells in our body have places where the virus can attach. So what happens when the virus arrives to our body? Uh, um, when the virus arrives to our body and connect with some cells or with some places in our cell, once the connection is done, the virus can go inside of the cell. And one is inside what the virus does is replicate the information and make new virus. But it makes like a thousand of new virus. But what happens is that after those virus are liberated to our body. So what happened? The virus has created an army, an enemy army inside of our body. Because what those new virus are going to do is the same process again. So after a while, we are going to have millions and billions of virus that are destroying our soldiers, that are the cells, and uh, making a horrible war. And for that, is that we start to feel bad, like having fever and things like that. So how, food, how does food can fight virus? Well, the thing is that the duplication of the virus can be inhibited by compounds in certain foods. How that happens? Well, I'm going to try to explain this as simple as I can. The thing is like, a, we can have different kind of, kind of protections. One of the things is external protection. So let's think that maybe the food number one is able to make external protection for ourselves. So what happened here? The virus, as I said before, he's looking for a place to hold on. The places are this in our cell. There are receptors. So how this cell is unprotected because that person doesn't eat well, the virus is able to attach to the cell. But maybe someone who ate an antiviral food, what happens here is that the virus try to connect to those places. But what the antiviral food make is to block that connection. It make, he, the antiviral food doesn't make possible that connection. So what happens here is that the virus arrives to your body, but it's not able to do anything because it arrives and he doesn't have any place where to go or where to connect because we had an army that is protecting our places in our cells. So this is one of the ways how food can prevent that the virus affect us. This is one example. So let's say this is food number one. Well, maybe I don't like food number one, so I don't eat it. What happens there? My cell is unprotected. So the virus, how my cell is unprotected, 
connect with the receptor. And once he connects, how my external protection wasn't there, the virus is able to go inside of my cell. But what happened here? I eat another food that is antiviral and is there inside of the cell, waiting. Is my army there, is ready to attack. So the virus is not able to replicate itself. It's not able to make new virus because the antiviral food block that process. So here we have two examples of how food could fight virus. And the thing is like, I cannot tell you exactly what kind of food do each fu function, but for that, it's like a, the better protection that we can have is eat a variety of food in order to diminish the probability to have an affection by virus. Yes, Margarita, uh, we could have like a different kind of uh, protections, let's say, of filters uh, for the virus. So, saying that, what I want to tell you is a food with antiviral activity that can help you and that is easy to include in your diet. So, let's start with the first one, success that was good for the immune system, and she's totally right. Turmeric. Turmeric is a root. It's commonly used in Indian food. Uh, usually you can find like a root or in powder, like in small bottles in the supermarket. So the turmeric is very good. Um, yeah, I'm still connected, okay diseases. Actually, this one, the uh, turmeric was one of the things that I started to give to my father when he started to have arthritis because it helps a lot for the inflammation. Also, it's an antioxidant, it's antimicrobial, so it means that it avoids the, the contamination with bacteria in your body and hold also has been found that it can prevent virus. For those who maybe don't take turmeric usually or don't think no turmeric, maybe are wondering how this can be ingested. Well, it's easy. You can use turmeric in many ways. One of the things is in infusion, for example. You can make a, you can buy the small pot in the supermarket and with the powder, make an infusion. If you don't like the taste, because for example, I don't like the infusion, just turmeric, you can mix it. I used to mix it with, uh, I don't know, I, I usually mix it with uh, green tea, with uh, chamomile. You can make mix of infusions and it tastes better. Also, you can use it as a spice. You can add turmeric to anything that you want. And also, you can find it in some commercial beverage as kombucha. Many kombucha brands have turmeric inside because the turmeric and the green tea together is a really, really good booster for the immune system. So this is the first one, turmeric. Second one, nori. Yes, maybe you haven't heard that, but nori is a good antiviral food. The seaweed that we find in sushi not only is delicious, it's also good for our immune system. It's a good source of magnesium, calcium, potassium, iron, and zinc. There are minerals that have essential function in our body. It's a source of fiber, also has protein, and what is most important is that most of the nori or most of the seaweed have all the essential amino acids there. What this means? Well, what is considered a complete, a complete protein 
is a protein that has all the essential amino acids. Um, for example, quinoa is an essential, is a complete protein. Well, nori has also all the essential amino acids. But, well, we know that we have to eat a lot of colorful nori like, to have the quantity of protein that we need. So, um, this is good, I find, because if you like sushi, well, you are eating something that is helping you. You are not, all, you are not only having pleasure in sushi, you also have the the good thing about it. Yes, sorry, uh, Margarita, sí, es la, es la hoja del sushi. So, how you can eat the nori? Well, uh, <laughs> to be honest, uh, sushi is, uh, is one of the, the options. The other option, you can buy the nori, you can find it in like in Asiatic, in Asian markets, uh, like a king fat. You can buy the nori, you can make cones at home because if you, for example, if you don't like sushi because you don't like raw fish or you don't want an option that has a lot of rice, you can make your own cone with the nori. Or you can buy a small package of nori that now you can find in the supermarket, Costco have it, and I think the Asian uh, supermarkets also, that is like a chips. Instead of eating potato chips, you can eat chips of nori. Okay, so the third one, it's okay, everything? No, spiruline is not the same that nori, but spiruline is an algae. So uh, I'm pretty sure that have almost the same kind of properties that the nori. Actually, to be honest, not all the not all the seaweeds, not all the algae have like a, the same kind of composition. It depends on where is uh, originated, but spirulin is a good option as well. Do you have any question here? Okay, so the next one is garlic that I think also that someone mentioned before. Someone have the microphone, I think, activated. Okay, garlic. Well, garlic is that kind of food that I think that generate conflicting emotions because some people love it, some people hate it. Um, in my case, I love it. My mom used to cook everything with garlic and I consider that everything that she cooks is delicious. Um, and garlic is a really, really good food to have in your diet because have a lot of good properties and also help you to make your food less salty because it gives you like a taste to the food so you don't, you don't have to use a lot of salty to find taste in your food. So garlic have antimicrobial activity, have anti-inflammatory activity as well as the turmeric some people say anti-cancer, I'm not pretty sure about that, but how it helps to the immune system, it has to help with the cancer. Also, uh, cardiovascular disease and is in an immunomodulatory, sorry, it has immunomodulatory properties. So what is that? What is immunomodulatory properties? Well, is basically when a food has this, is that it is like a, a mediator of the immune system. What does that mean? Well, as I said before, when there is kind of a war in our body, when an enemy that can be a virus, a bacteria, a fungus, go inside of our body, sometimes the immune system has just a signal to attack. 
to attack anything that comes to your body. So what happens here is that it's like a killing everybody. And you don't distinguish if you're killing good guys and bad guys. So garlic is one of those mediators that say, hey, calm down, calm down, because these people is good, these people are bad, so be careful who are you killing. So the thing is like a help, like a to moderate your immune system. So not only protect you, also help to moderate some functions in the immune system. Hey, why do you feel like a, the garlic hate you? Well, once a uh, garlic has been tested with virus in lab, has been tested in plates and has been tested in mice, um, he ha it has an effective function in the virus of influenza, in herpes, in rhinovirus, that is the cold virus, the viral pneumonia, and the rotavirus, that is basically the stomach flu, you know, the, the gastric, the, the gastro that usually kids have in schools, all the garlic is good for all those virus. Oh, also bad that it gives you a very bad uh, reaction while that happens. However, sometimes it's good to verify if it's just the garlic who gives you the reaction or if the, it's like a, an interruption between food. But well, that is another subject. Um, but that, that could happen, but maybe is, is a good thing for most of the people, but not for everybody. Third one, oregano. I love oregano also. It's a spice, it's, a, it's very used in Mediterranean cuisine, um, Greeks, and Italian use it a lot. And it's a very, very good option to cook. It's the same as garlic. It helps you to give more flavor to your food. So like that, you don't have to use too much salt. And it's very good for respiratory health. So oregano is, um, is a food that is very important to have present if you suffer of asthma, for example, because it can help you to relax your respiratory ways. One of the ways to use it is, for example, as essential oil. If you have a diffuser, you can use it there and it helps you a lot. If you don't have a diffuser, you can put just like a, the oregano in, in a, a small pot boil and put your face just like a, uh, over the pot, being careful, don't burn you. Mm. So this is really, really good for people who have respiratory issues. Oregano has been tested with different viruses as well and helps a lot with herpes, dengue, influenza, and poliovirus, that is the virus of polymelitis polymeritis, I'm not really sure how is the pronunciation. So, how we can introduce oregano in our diet is very simple. You can add it to chicken, to beef, you can make dressing salads with that. Actually, you can make a dressing salad with garlic and oregano. And you can use an infusion as well. If you feel like the taste is weird, you can, make, you can do the same, as I said, with turmeric. You can mix the infusion, and like that you have the benefits, but you, you don't have the, all the taste. You, you, can, you can hide it a little bit. Okay. Five one. Here. here this is not food exactly. This is a molecule in the food. The name is
Are you there? Okay, well, anyway, I love that one, Re Resveratrol, because you find it in red wine. Woo! So I'm gonna let her, um, yeah, I'm gonna let her like, uh, like elaborate on this idea, but I know, yeah, and it's Friday. I know um, that Pinot Noir and I think Malbec are good sources of uh, resveratrol. Of course, you're not you're not gonna have the whole bottle there. Um, but if ever you go for red wine, if you enjoy having red wine, then I know for sure Pinot Noir because when I found out. I started like only drinking Pinot Noir for that reason, because it's one of the red wines that has the largest concentration of uh, Resveratrol. I think I got it right, Resveratrol. I'm sure there are more foods with this, not only red wine, but I do like red wine a lot. So she's back. Um, you have to unmute yourself, Vanessa, because I can't. Yeah. There you go. All right, so I'm just gonna shut up about my red wine and let's <laughs> I got excited. I'm like, yay! Red wine. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, I always I I also love the option of <laughs> red wine. Uh, so the resveratrol have is an antioxidant, so it has functions similar as vitamin C. And, as, and other uh, molecules. Um, it can help you for your cardiovascular system, also can help you with your neurological system. It's an anti-inflammatory, and well, some people say that is anti-cancer. I, I always am careful about this. Uh, I put it there because that cancer is a really complex disease. So, well, for sure, if it helps your immune system, if it boosts your immune system, it's going to help you to prevent cancer, but it's not the only cure, okay? So, with resveratrol, there is something that I want you to be careful. For example, one of the fruits that have most resveratrol is grapes, and for that, wine as well. So as Jenita was saying, this is a good thing because it means that drinking wine is kind of okay. <laughs> but be careful about that because it doesn't mean that you have to drink a bottle of wine every day. It's like, a, yeah, if you have a glass of wine every day because you like it, it's okay. It gives you a good thing. Beside pleasure, it gives you a lot of antioxidants that help. So... A glass of wine or a couple of grapes have like a 0.2 to 2 milligrams of resveratrol. However, a supplement has 200 times what a grapes have. And you have to be careful about this because how pharmaceutical industry saw that it was something very good, it says, okay, so let's make it simpler, simpler, sorry, easier for people. And let's sell this and you just take the pill and it's all. The thing is like, and now they are finding that a really, really high doses as this one is not good for your body. It's better to have a doses as a, this one. So, I think that it's better if you take the glass of wine instead of taking one pill of resveratrol. It's just my point of view. And actually, let's be honest, grapes is part of our nature. So if they have just two milligrams, it's because the nature knows that that is the dosage that we need for our body. Okay. But there are more food that have resveratrol. Yes, we have other options as cranberries, as cocoa, and peanuts. So I'm saying cocoa and I'm not saying chocolate because the resveratrol is in little quantities in cocoa. 
And when we talk about chocolate, we are talking about the bar that is mixed with other ingredients. So if you are thinking about chocolate, I advise you to think about dark chocolate. It means chocolate, a bar that has 70 or more percent of cacao. Because when we buy a milk chocolate, what we are buying is 30% of cacao and like a 70% of sugar and fat that are not good for your body. Because actually, for example, many, many countries let use palm oil in chocolate. So I know the fat that it came from cacao. So, well, I don't want to complicate yourself, but it's just saying that try to choose things with less sugar and more things that are good for your body as 70% chocolate. Okay, so until here, uh, I'm going just like a summarize about the resveratrol. It's antioxidant, it helps your cardiovascular system, your neurological system, it helps with inflammatory diseases, it boosts your immune system, it can be found in grapes and in wine, this is like a, the major sources, but you can find also in cranberries, in cacao or cocoa, it depends, uh, and peanuts. And here, I'm giving you the A foods that can boost your immune system and that you can eat easily in your diet. So you have turmeric, grapes, oregano, garlic, nori, or seaweed or algae, peanuts, cocoa, cranberries. You have all these options. It exists many, many, many other options, but uh, I don't want you to give you so much information because the idea is that you retain something. But yes, if you know other options, as I don't know, vitamin C, echinacea, all those are good as well. All those options are very good also. I just wanted to give you eight, and one of the things that I want to, to tell you is that it's important that you try all those options in your everyday life. And one of the things like uh, that I always like to say is that a way to know that you are eating like um, different sources, of uh, compounds that help to your system is that try to think what you ate at the end of the day and if you five or four colors, you are eating very well. What I want to say with that, well, let's say that I, I had breakfast with berries and nuts. So I had blueberries and strawberries. So here I have two colors. Later, I have a salad. I put in my salad uh, lettuce, I put tomatoes, and I put carrots. So, carrots is a third color, tomatoes, well, and strawberries is the same, but lettuce gives me the fourth color. And later, I eat in, I ate, sorry, a bar of chocolate, and a glass of wine. There I have even six colors. So in this way I have a food or I have a diet that is rich in many, 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 many antioxidants and in many compounds that are going to help you to fight the virus because you are posting your army in your body. So, um, well, besides food, I wanted to tell you that also, it's important that you move your body well in this kind thing that I know that is a difficult time for many people, but move your body, try to, to cook new healthy recipes, learn something like that you have your mind occupied, stay away, please, from high quantities of sugar. I know that desserts are delicious. I love desserts but high quantity of sugar debilitate your immune system. I'm not going 
dipping, I'm not going deep in that subject because it's a complicated subject, but we can talk about it later. Um, try to stay calm, to, to don't have too much anxiety about the situation. Try to keep in touch with your family, with your friends, because maybe you are okay, but maybe uh, there are people that live alone and maybe they, they can have more anxiety because of the situation. And be kind with others or to others, please, because that helps that everybody can stay in a good state of mind. So this is like a, all the information that I wanted to tell you. I hope that you like it. And if you have any question, please feel free to make any question. Um, Vane, I know there was a question in the chat. Uh, hold on, hold on. Because Margarita asked if you do not recommend um, pharmacy supplements at all, or could we like, let's say go, let's say we don't have the opportunity to have all the vitamin C we would like, is it okay for us to take like a supplement or would you rather really us make an effort and like go well, to I, the vitamin C? Yeah. Uh -huh. Sorry for, for cutting you up. Um, yeah, I think that if you feel better taking supplements, it's okay. It's not a bad way. Actually, supplements was made uh, for those countries where it was difficult, for example, to find all the optional food that we have here. For example, I send supplements to my parents every month because they don't find uh, rich food in Venezuela, unfortunately. However, I always think that it's good to eat a variety of food. Like uh, to don't feel confident we are only eating or we are taking supplements. Why? Because in the supplements you have all the minerals that we need, but you don't have other things. For example, the molecule that fight virus in garlic is a molecule that is called acetin. That you are not going to find it in a supplement of uh, vitamins, for example. There are supplements of allicin. But if you're going to start to buy all the supplements of all the molecules that are in food, at the end, you're going to finish like a, with 30 bottles of supplements. It's difficult to, like, to take 30 pills a day. Okay. Ah, uh, she left. Oh, no. Oh, okay. 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 I'm back. Okay. I'm back? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, cool. And so, uh, one, one other question for the cranberries. Are dry cranberries okay? Yeah. Dry cranberries have almost the same properties that uh, fresh ones. However, be careful because the dry one has more sugar. So usually what happens is like a, you don't feel that you are eating a lot, but you are taking a lot of sugar with it. Got it. It's the same for all the dry foods. Perfect, perfect. Cool. Um, so thank you, Vane. Thank you so much. So girls, if you have any other questions, uh, you can contact her directly or, um, yeah, put that, that's like, yes. There, there she is. So this is her Instagram, her LinkedIn, and or in the group. She's also in the group. You can message her. Um, and I'm, this is gonna be recorded, so I'm gonna post it in the group later on today. If ever you you wanna go over it again, or you wanna share it with your family and friends. Um, but thank you, Vanessa. It was really, really, really cool, and uh, we're gonna have you back for that sugar situation, because I know many of us have like a little sugar addiction there. Um, so yeah, follow her, please follow her on Instagram and uh, let's all be healthy and stay active. Thank you so much. I hope to see you in Zumba today. Yeah, yeah, of course, I'm going to be there. I don't have pretest today because I'm not working. <laughs> there we go. So we'll see you all later in my Zumba class or during the weekend. Remember also tomorrow there's a free class strength training class if you want to join us it's going to be given in the group um but if not that's it thank you vane
Thank you, YouTube, for joining us. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Ciao. <laughs>